Optimism is not only warranted, but it's necessary. Trust has to be built, trust has to be maintained. We've seen um, you know, a drop in rates of cancer screening. We've seen a drop in the rates of people coming to hospital with, with acute conditions like strokes and, and heart attacks. There will be associated depression, domestic violence, all sorts of issues that will have arisen because of the lockdown, the economic consequences, etc. One of the challenges for the government is persuading people about this risk and benefit equation and persuading people to get the vaccine, maybe incentivizing it, encouraging it in different ways. Because if we can't get a high vaccine uptake, we would expect all the measures that are in place today are going to be on and off over the next year, two years, three years. We're obviously in a very difficult turmoil uh, throughout the world uh, with everything that's going on. But there's one thing that we can collaborate across all borders, and that's on the care of a critically ill child. We have to start uh, relaxing gradually. But as you can see, once we have relaxed, there are these clusters coming back again. So we, we do appeal to everybody's cooperation. We will have to live for a while in a world where even if restrictions are lifted, there will be sporadic cases popping up. These then will have to be effectively tracked and traced, and this can, can be possibly done with mobile phone applications. Nobody likes it. Nobody wants to do it. But you do it, because it's part of your obligation as, part, as, as a member of society, and everybody around you understands that. You, feel, you don't feel vulnerable to talk about mental health issues, um, to, to talk about it, because when you are you're really contributing to normalizing it and to destigmatizing. No matter what race, where you're from, what country, what your political view is, but have to consolidate the power to overcome this pandemic because this is really killing and affecting the whole human race.